I'm going to start our conversation with your favorite topic. Yes. Valuation. Yes. So even after your last quarter, IAC continues to trade at a discount to your stakes in Match and Angie Home Services. And of course, for those who aren't initiated, it means that the rest of your company, the so-called stub assets, right? Uh, Vimeo, of course, which lots of people are familiar with, applications publishing, and more than a billion dollars in cash yep. is being valued at less than zero. Yes, a negative billion. Well, that excludes the cash. But so all those businesses valued at a negative billion as of yesterday. Yes. So besides talking about it with me right here, what are you doing about that? What can you do about that as the CEO? I, I Look, we've done a lot of things. I think the discount was bigger, actually, historically. It so it's smaller than, than, than maybe it's ever been. But uh, So we'll give you credit for progress. <laughs> right. Look, I, I think that there's three reasons why the street in general discounts collections of assets. I don't want to use the word conglomerate because I do think of us as an anti-conglomerate. But what they say is, we'll either number one, we'll never get access to, to those businesses directly. We've spun off, I don't know how many businesses, 10 businesses or something like that, eight businesses in, in the past, or, or spun businesses have spun off businesses. Um, they say, uh, we'll never get access to the cash, uh, or you'll squander the cash before we have a chance to get access to it. I think we've been pretty good capital allocators over the last few years. And when we look at the, since Barry took control of what is now IAC, that's outperformed the market by about 3x. Uh, and if you look at over any period, we've generally outperformed the market. But, uh, and the third one is that if I do get access to these assets or these cash, it'll be tax inefficient. And everything we've done has been very tax efficient. We're very sort of sensitive to the tax uh, components of things. So I don't think, this is me just complaining, saying I don't think we deserve it, but, but <laughs> we, we, we just have to keep executing and telling that story. And I think over time, and it has been, it, it goes away. N nothing works better than execution. You raised for me a tantalizing question. Is there any reason shareholders shouldn't expect IAC to spin off Match probably first and subsequently Angie Home Services the way you did with Expedia? And what goes in to that decision? Well, it, it's a question I got on our earnings call this morning, and it's a question we get every uh, uh, time we're in front of investors. It's a, a totally good and, and valid one at that. We, we don't have a formula for when we spin something off. We don't have a specific set of rules. It's got to be worth this much, or it's got to have this much revenue. Or, or she's 18, and it's time to go to college. <laughs> right. It's just it's, 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 it's a confluence of events. We think about what's best for the company, the sort of subsidiary, what's best for what's left behind. And we have to optimize both of those things. And you know, there has to be a reason to do it. There has to be a value in doing it. And, and we'll constantly think about that. Like we always have, we always will. We're not in the business of empire building. We're not in the business of conglomeration for conglomeration's sake. But I think that there has been value in Match and Angie being part of IC. And I think that there can continue to be. But we also think about when spins are appropriate and, and never stop thinking about that. So about what's left. Yep. Why, and this is a question you get as well, why keep publishing? Why keep applications when they are, I'm not saying they're bad businesses, but they're low multiple businesses relative to everything else you do? Look, I think that it's a, we've got to do so it one at a time. Your stock price. Yeah, maybe. I think one at a time. Applications is, I think, a great business. It's been a phenomenal cash flow business for us. Uh, it, it delivers consistent, it has delivered consistent earnings for us. And I don't think we'll get that same value outside in the market for it. So I, I don't think anyone will appreciate that value as much as we do. So I'm comfortable uh, sort of collecting what, what, what we get from that business. I think in publishing, it took us some time. It was unsellable for some period. I mean, we were just in a bad place in that business for a while. We had a huge restructuring there. We've now got it in a healthy place. And now I think that is that, that business is doing well. The growth prospects look healthier than they've ever looked. So I'd like to see how that plays out for a little while. OK. This all brings us to an important question, which is, what is IAC? Because some people think of it as being a company it once was, but probably isn't anymore, which is a post-VC incubator. Yep. Your businesses are too mature for that. Yep. Um, you might have been a growth equity company a couple of years ago, but again, your business is now, you're sort of in execution mode and to a degree consolidation mode. That's what you've been doing in a number of your markets, including obviously the purchase of Angie's List. Um, 
So where do you go? I mean, are you going back to post VC incubation? Should and if so, shouldn't you be incubating something already? Y yes. The, on the last question, there there are a few businesses that I'd consider in much earlier stages. In, in many ways, Vimeo is still an incubation project. Dot Dash within publishing is still a incubation project, and we're looking at more. I mean, when I look at the market right now, M and A is very expensive, and there is not great opportunities to do some of the things we've done in the past. And so I do think we are going earlier stage. You look at Tinder is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. This is a business that was started in this building or in, in IAC as a pure incubation. So that what's was, the next Tinder? Uh, I wish I knew. I, look, I, I don't think we, we know that right now, but we're, we're in a few categories starting to build or shortly will start to build things that we think have that kind of potential. Can we talk a bit about that, peer into the future? Because the businesses, the technology, let's think of it this way, the technology that's driving the businesses you're in today yep. is getting a little long in the tooth, right? The internet became commercially viable 20 years ago. Right. Smartphones are 10 years old already. That's when we saw the first iPhone. So I wonder, and I think a lot of other people wonder, is when you do do the next Tinder, let's call it, what's the enabling technology? Because you'd think that it has to be something that's kind of exciting now. Right. AI, autonomous driving, VR. Where are you prospecting? I think about it more simply than that. We're not the, the VR creators or the AR creators. I think there's other people who are better than that, Facebook, Google. I think we go at a much sort of simpler, more understandable level. And it goes to the, the kind of fundamental concept of IAC, which is interactivity. There are still categories where Interactivity, I mean, we can talk about Home Advisor for a second, where interactivity can be defined or can be changed dramatically for the benefit of both sides of a marketplace. Right now, when most people book a home service professional, they do that over the phone, through word of mouth, through back and forth scheduling, instead of pressing a button and that being done. And I look at that in a lot of categories where there's still things happening over the telephone, phone trees, uh, uh, just inefficient processes of connecting one side of a marketplace with the other side of a marketplace. So there's still gold to be mined, if Absolutely, you will, in yes. network effects. Absolutely, yes. yes. Okay. And, and, and just having software in between that that can organize both sides of a marketplace. That's not brilliant software. It's really great software, great UI, and uh, uh, execution. Uh, one of the more remarkable things about IAC is that you've been able to have success where you've found it without a lot of overlap with, you know, the big five, let's call it, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google. Where you sit today, can you see yourself growing and expanding into some of the things you just hinted at without running into them? I don't think there's anything you can do on the internet without running into those big five in one way or another. I mean, as of now, Apple and Google take a huge tax on all of our mobile businesses that monetize in mobile. What they may not in some of those businesses be competing directly with us, but the two of them are taking a huge tax on our revenue that we generate through those platforms. So we're dealing, we need to deal with them in, in that huge regard. Huge meaning what? If they didn't exist, you'd have? Well, their, their, their published uh, take rate is 30% mm -hmm. on, on essentially all apps that run through their platforms. Uh, so, so we interact with them. We do compete with them. I think the thing that's worked for us is relentless focus in a category, relentless focus on delivering the best possible customer experience you can for a category. And, and their platforms generally are trying to accomplish a lot of things at once or trying to accomplish one mega thing with some subsidiary things that may work in service of that. Our platforms try and do one thing really well. And I, I look at Angie Home Services right now and think one day, and this isn't soon, but I think one day that platform for the home can be one of the big five. 